Well, hello and thank you for joining me for another Alex on Tech and ITY video. Today I have with me Gavin Loth. He's the Vice President of Consumer Business for Asia Pacific and Japan. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Alex. Now we're here today at uh, CBIT 2018 in Australia and we've seen the, uh, the new Norton Core product. I had a great uh, intro to it from uh, Bruce McCorkendale, who's your um, uh, the Norton Core architect. But uh, you must be excited to be bringing it to Australia and New Zealand and then presumably later in the year through, or next year throughout the Asia Pacific uh, and Japan region. Yes, we are, Alex. Thanks. We're super happy to, um, to bring this to market. We launched it back about eight months ago back in the US mm -hmm. and we've got some really good um, traction with consumers, really positive feedback. Um, you know, up to now we've been protected or protecting over... We've seen 70 million threats that mm -hmm. have been protected by Norton Core, and the telemetry that we're getting and what consumers are seeing and kind of giving us feedback is super, super positive. So it's nice to be able to eventually get this into market for our Australian and uh, New Zealand consumers. And hopefully, you know, we'll start to see some really good traction here. And, you know, as we start to expand this internationally, we'll take it to other markets outside of Australia and New Zealand. Sure. And, I mean, the, the pricing is really keen. I mean, obviously, there's an upfront uh, cost, but then of, and we were given the price as three ninety nine Australian, and then that includes 10 copies of the Norton Security, which is a, a really huge amount, and then only, you know, $17.99 per year with those 10 copies thereafter. It's very keen pricing. Yes, we wanted to make sure that, you know, it's become such an important device in terms of consumer's home, um, the kind of the, the router gateway um, device that sits in front of uh, the, the home. You know, so protecting internet devices, protecting your PCs and your Macs and your mobile devices, these are key concerns for, you know, parents, for customers, for consumers. Um, so adding as much value as we could, you know, along with parental controls, and you know all the other device management capabilities this is becoming obviously key from a consumer security perspective have you been lucky enough to be part of the sort of internal beta testing program um i have one at home yeah. um at the moment you know we haven't launched it um in singapore yet yeah. so there were a couple of tweaks that i had to do sure, there. Sure, yeah, but yeah. um you know we feel good about the testing that we're doing in australia before we launch that so mm. i'm excited i want to get one i mean I just you know you, you with so many devices you have these days and we spoke about the Mirai botnet attacks and all those IoT devices being hacked during the session with Bruce. And like, you know, it's, this is the level of security you need these days to, um, to feel safe. Absolutely, and I mean, that, I think those are just gonna explode. I mean, if you look at the amount of IoT devices that are connected globally today, mm -hmm. it's around, let's just say, two or three billion devices. I mean, that's supposed to project up to 20 billion by mm -hmm. the year 2020. So I think with the explosion of IoT devices, people are becoming much more mobile. Uh, in terms of the devices that they have within the organize, within inside the house, uh, as well as kind of the amount of devices that are being proliferated with kids mm. um, and you know people who come and go within the with, the, with their house, so it's becoming a, a big issue for consumers. And understanding what level of protection they have is obviously key to them. Are there any differences that you see in the security markets between the different Asian regions? Uh, you know, Japan's presumably more sophisticated than some of the other Southeast Asian countries and of course Australia and how does that all compare to the to the US? Just, I mean, generally, you've spoken about all the devices, but what are some of the overall trends you might Yes, have? I mean, I, I feel that the US is most probably 18 months ahead just mm. in terms of their pickup, uh, in terms of uh, IoT devices and, you know, services that they bring to market that are kind of uh, internet capable. Um, we see some very strong pickup in Australia. They tend to follow those trends. Mm. Japan is one of our big markets as well. We see the same thing, sort of thing there. And then we have pockets around Asia. You know, we're seeing maybe similar trends happening in Singapore and mm -hmm. Hong Kong. And then we have a place like India where, you know, we've seen this rapid digitization mm. of, you know, services that have happened over the last kind of two or three years, which has changed the landscape totally. You know, we've essentially got 1.1 billion digital identities in India mm. and obviously trying to protect those and allow people access to certain services using those digital identities is paramount you know so with it with all of this convenience comes you know a level of security that we need to take into account as well and I guess you know we've seen there's other security companies that have um, talked about bringing out routers with security but I haven't seen them go to the the depths or the extent yeah. to which, I mean, there's a famous saying that like for Apple, you know, the best way they could deliver their software was through hardware. And it looks like 
you're doing following the same wise path yes yeah, so I mean we've it's it's a difficult thing to do hmm. to actually take a, a, a core piece of software and stick it onto a device we've gone through a number of iterations we started this process maybe three or four years ago mm. so Bruce spoke about the scope works the labs and yes. the different things that did fly and didn't and this was one of the ones that did exactly a lot of internal innovation has gone through the process mm. though so just I mean you know the security challenges that one has when go when you go through a uh, bringing a product like this to market are immense just in terms of understanding you know the crypto technology that protects the device mm. itself as well as understanding how updates get sent to the device and, and how that the certification process yeah. goes uh, goes you know through the process so it's not a simple thing to do mm. and you know we've had some challenges and hurdles that we've gone through but you know and we've gone through a kind of a, a period of about seven to eight months in the u.s now we've got a lot of feedback mm. um, so we started to tweak all the bugs and we feel really good about the product and consumers are resonating with the message that we're coming back with so we feel good about it. Now, I know we've got limited time, so I'll just finish with my three sort of standard questions. One is to ask you how you think the security in industry or threats or what the landscape might look like in a decade, if you know, looking into, say, 2028, which is, I guess, if you knew that, you'd be on a beach in Bahamas somewhere. Yes. But, you know. I, I mean, I think, you know, as, as we've evolved away from kind of what is very much understood in a consumer's mind around device protection, I think people are becoming much more aware around their footprint on mm. the internet as they start to utilize and access these different types of services. It's not so just your carbon footprint, it's your digital footprint. Exactly. <laughs> and understanding digital safety implications, mm. right, around protecting my identity and protecting my privacy. Mm. These are becoming much more front of mind for consumers. You might have I to put a, like a Facebook protection module in there or something. You know? <laughs> yes, social media, I mean, I think is key. And I think these trends are just going to continue. I'm not sure exactly what it's going to look like sure. in 2028. But I feel the challenges that we have today around securing identities and protecting our privacy are going to continue into the future. And you'll have the, the Norton robot of which the, the core will be the brain. You know? Yes, I'm sure we'll be around for another 10 or 20 or 30 years. Sure, I'm sure, I'm sure. And then look, one question I always like to ask, which is just sort of something that's sort of a little bit different. And that's just to ask if you could please share some of the best advice you've ever received to help you get where you are today. You know, I feel I've been very lucky. I've been at Semantic for 18 years. Mm. Not as long as Bruce. He said yes, 28. No, <laughs> he, he I've said had he'd a been number, of, <laughs> number of different roles yeah. in the enterprise. Um, I've worked in Australia. I've worked in Singapore. Mm -hmm. I had a great opportunity to work in Japan for three years. And another one, Nihongo no Hanashimastaka. Hi or Iye. For me, it's Iye, but for you, it might be Hi. Yeah, Hi. Hi. Oh, so this thing. And. Um, and you know semantic paid for my mba mm -hmm. so i've had a real positive experience working yeah. here and i've always tried to kind of give my guidance to new folk within the organization is to you know semantic or an organization that gives opportunity mm. so all i say to new folk coming to the organization is take the opportunity when it's presented so well, that's good advice so do you have what's your final message for ity viewers and readers and for your current and future customers and partners you know, we feel really good about the opportunity that presents itself in um, Australia to consumers. Mm -hmm. You know, we feel good about the level of protection and the brand awareness that consumers resonate with us uh, in Australia. It's a great market, mm -hmm. really, really good customers, really loyal customers. We've got a great market share here and it's really a great place to do business in Australia. So thanks for watching and see you soon. Well, thank you, Gavin, and I hope the, the call comes out sooner rather than later. Thank you yes, very much. Yes, thank you.